built by Northland Dutch yacht builders in 1990, this steel liveaboard long range explorer yacht went through a refit in 2023, which included the installation of two brand new 450 horsepower engines. So join me in this video as I show you around this boat and please don't forget to subscribe because it means that I can bring you more boats just like this one. Guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a very sunny Cannes Yachting Festival. Now, a lot of you who have been following my channel for a while will love this boat for a variety of different reasons. I'm really looking forward to taking you on board. Um, as you can see, this is a classically styled vessel. She's got a steel hull and an aluminium superstructure uh, and she's a twin engine boat as well. And at the time of making this video and uploading it to my YouTube channel, she is currently listed for sale with the Volk Yacht Brokers, but I'll go into a bit more detail in relation to that in a minute. First thing you'll notice is the canoe stern on this boat. Now, one of the benefits of having a canoe stern is obviously it gives you better sea keeping in following seas as well. So I know that's a feature that a lot of people that love these kind of explorer yachts really, really do appreciate. Anyway, let's board the boat into the cockpit via the Passerelle, which is a midships on this boat. As you can see, you've got a nicely laid out area here, dining table in the middle for your formal dining, but what an amazing view you get when you're sat here. And obviously at the moment, we're tied up alongside in Cam, but it gives you a good idea of just how accessible this part of the boat is to the seascape. And of course, if you want to, you can lower down and enclose this part of the boat as well. So if you are at anchor and it's a bit windy out there, and of course you can lower these down and cover this area away from the wind. Uh, this boat does have a flybridge as well. We'll go up there in a second, but first, let me take you around the upper deck. As you can see, really, really wide side decks here, nice big bulwarks here, and we've got a teak cap rail as well that runs all the way around the boat. But when you're moving around this boat, especially when you're at sea, underway, you've got plenty of room thanks to the really wide side decks. Notice over here on the starboard side, I have a boarding gate. And of course, look, if you do happen to be punching through the big stuff, then the scuppers will ensure that any excess water coming over the deck will quickly flow back into the sea. Uh, engine room, we'll go down there a little bit later on in the video. Uh, but yeah, she does have twin engines on board, which I know a lot of people would appreciate, uh, especially for this kind of boat. But yeah, I'll take you down there a little bit later on in the video. First, let's head up onto the bow. As you can see, plenty of space here to sit back, relax, enjoy the sun. And of course, you notice as well, this bow is actually flared. So again, when you are going through the rough stuff, it's gonna to help to ensure that the deck is kept as dry as possible. Obviously, ground tackle over there under the cover. Uh, as we're at the boat show, I'm not gonna take that cover off, obviously. And also as well, if you're interested in crew accommodation on board this boat, it does have some, and you get access to the crew accommodation through that hatch there. Uh, but the boat is being used at the moment, so I'm gonna save the crew from having to walk around there with a camera. But of course, from here, we get a really good view of the profile of this boat. As you can see, just by looking at her, I mean, she's designed and built for going through the sort of stuff that you will encounter uh, when you are exploring the coast or wherever it is you decide to go off on your adventures. But yeah, this boat is designed and built uh, for some serious sea keeping. Of course, the pilot house there, I'll take you in there in just a second, but first I just want to head aft along the port side deck. You'll notice as well, we do have a boarding ladder on the outboard side uh, the port aft gunnel. So again, it's another good way to store whatever it is you need to store on the boat. And also, look, I'll show you that. Established in 1875, and there's some heritage for you. Right, let's head into the saloon. As you can see, seating over on the port side, the cabinetry over there as well, a U-shaped sofa over here on the starboard side. So really nice. Uh, area for lounging, just relaxing. Of course, you've got the big windows there, allowing lots of natural light to come in. And I really like the indirect lighting uh, in here as well. Really nice touch. But yeah, as you can see, you can move this furniture pretty much how you want it because it is freestanding. 
I also love the way that these doors open up out into the cockpit as well. Again, creates a really nice living area where you can seamlessly connect the outdoor space to the interior as well. Right, let's head down into the first part of the accommodation area. Let's take off my sunglasses, head down these steps. Okay, so here we have the first cabin. As you can see, single cabin in here. Plenty of storage in here as well. Look, you've got loads of drawers underneath both bunks, some in the center there as well, and some additional storage up there. Two portholes in here. Again, you can open these up so you can get lots of fresh air through this space. Lots of natural light in here as well. And you can probably see a speaker up there. And look, another one in there as well. So look, I mean, I've got two kids. This would be a perfect cabin uh, for them, although they're a bit young. But if they were older, this would be the perfect setup for them. Of course, you do have an ensuite as well. Shower over there on the left-hand side. Decent sized sink there, another porthole. Look, you've got the mirror and the porthole as well. I like that, very nice. Toilet down there, of course. And another mirror on that door there. But yeah, so this is the first cabin and it is the single cabin. You've got reading lights as well over on that bulkhead and on that one. But yeah, very nice. Right, let's head out of this cabin. Do a sharp turn to right. And I'll take you into this one, VIP cabin. So we've got a double cabin here. Again, plenty of headroom, lots of cabinetry in here. Uh, I like the fact over here uh, on the starboard side, you've got a seating area as well. So again, you can get up in the morning, sit there with your coffee and just figure out what it is you want to do for the day. Uh, two portholes over there as well. Again, they can be opened up to allow some fresh air into here and more cabinetry, so plenty of spaces there to stow away all of your gear. And of course, if I shut this door here and open up this one, here we have the ensuite for the VIP. Okay, another big mirror there, obviously sink, toilet, and a shower in there. All right, let's shut that and a more hanging wardrobe space over there as well. All right, let's open up this door. The other thing you'll notice as well, we're walking around, plenty to grab onto. So if you are making your way around the boat whilst you're at sea in heavy seas, you've got plenty of stuff to grab onto. Uh, really, really important safety feature. I like the use of the indirect lighting as well. The other thing that's worth pointing out is each of these cabins can have their climate controlled individually thanks to those digital control panels. Uh, so let's ascend up these steps, take you back into the saloon. And you come up here and we turn left. So over here on the starboard side, once you step up this step, more seating over here. And then opposite that we have the galley. So open plan living on this boat, again, I really like that because it just means that you're better connected with your guests on board. Um, plenty of cold storage over here. Of course, got the sink, another porthole there, and a big window there, look, as well. Smeg appliances on this boat. And look, there you go, look, there's the galley. Of course, you do have fiddles on here as well. So you've got something to grab onto. But yeah, I think if you're cooking up a meal, you can obviously converse with the captain as well as obviously with the guests as well. So yeah, you can stay engaged and interactive with the guests on board, which I think is really nice rather than being shut away. I like this feature up here, look. A nautical mirror with some indirect lighting around that. And then if we move forward here to the helm position. So throttle control levers for the twin engines. There you go, sneak peek of the engine room there, thanks to the uh, CCTV setup. But yeah, everything you need within easy reach. Over here on the left-hand side, multifunction display, Raymarine multifunction display, Simrad Autopilot, compass rose there as well, look. 
VHF radio and the controls for the bow thruster. Again, you've got handles all the way around here, so you've got something to grab onto. But look, if I show you as well, you get really good visibility out here. Very nice. And look, there's the controls for the stabilizers. You'll notice as well, you can get access out onto the side deck, the port side deck, obviously through that door. And there is another door over here on the starboard side as well. So if you are operating this vessel as an owner operator, you've got quick and easy access onto both side decks. Right, let me take you down into the owner's suite. So descend these stairs. Again, you'll notice great use of the indirect LED lighting as well. Again, that is the full beam owner's suite. And I'll take you in there in just a second. But first, let me take you into the second VIP suite. Again, another double cabin here. Nice big bed, flush up against the bulkhead. Porthole over there. And look, you can see the curvature of the bow as well, the flaring of that bow. A porthole up there, which can be opened up. And another one over there, look. And of course, TV on the bulkhead. And over here, digital controls for the climate control and air conditioning. Plenty of headroom in here as well. So yeah, look, if I show you up there, look. I would say it's probably about seven feet of headroom in here. More cabinetry over there, look, so you can stow away all your stuff. Very well placed fire extinguisher under there. And you'll notice as well, we've got a drawer, or two drawers actually, under the bed as well. And of course, as you would expect, this cabin does have an ensuite. Shower over there in the corner, obviously a toilet down there, a sink with some more cabinetry underneath, and a decent sized mirror and another porthole. And again, look, more storage up there as well. So yeah, that is the second double cabin. Now if I head aft, again look, another grab rail on that bulkhead. Now let me take you into the full beam owner suite. I love this cherry wood interior, really nice feel in here. Uh, starting over here, which this side of course is the port side. So you've got a sofa there, freestanding sofa, so you can move that around if you want to. Port hole over there more ventilation ducts, digital controls for the climate control, and of course some more drawers there, with some more drawers underneath the double bed. And over here on this side, have a vanity area or an area that you can use to do some work, you know, set your laptop there, look, there's plenty of PowerPoints everywhere, and you can get some work done, catch up on your emails whilst you're underway. And look, another porthole there, look, with the curtains that can be shut, more ventilation ducts. But yeah, it's a really nice feel in here, very spacious. I love the fact that it's obviously full beam as well, making full use of the very, very generous beam on this boat. And look, some more indirect lighting up there as well. If you are a regular viewer or if you are a subscriber, you'll know how much I love my indirect lighting. I just think it really does set the tone when you're on board a boat like this. But here is the owner's en suite, toilet down there, more cabinetry, sink, big mirror with a navy salute, as you were, and obviously a shower in there as well. But yeah, let me know what you think of this uh, owner's cabin in the comments below. I'm really, really impressed with just how much accommodation you get on board this boat uh, and the layout as well. I think that, you know, if you're gonna be on board with friends and family. You can put the kids up forward and let the other adults can come and stay in this part of the boat with you so you get a decent night's sleep. All right, let's ascend back up the steps. And what I'm gonna do now is take you into the engine room. Before we head down to the engine room, I must show you the flybridge. The boat deck is located on the aft section of this deck. And as we move forward, there is a seating area over to port. Past the seating area is where we find the midship's helm position flanked on either side by plenty of storage space. So we get access to the engine room through this way out onto the starboard side deck, spin around 
one step down and into the engine room. Right, I better spin around and walk down this ladder backwards. There we go. Normally I would descend and ascend these ladders in the traditional Navy way, but with a camera in hand, it's not a good idea. And here we have the engine room. As you can see, twin Scania engines there, over there, generator, uh, water maker over there. The fuel tanks on this Explorer Yacht can hold 15,800 litres, which is around 3,480 gallons of fuel and around 3,000 litres of fresh water, as well as 1,500 litres of black water. Now, whilst there is no data regarding the range of this vessel, I would be very surprised if that range, when motoring at around eight knots, is under 3,000 nautical miles. However, please don't quote me on that figure as it is just a very rough guesstimation. But I'm interested to hear what you think of this engine room, the headspace and general layout in here, I thought was fantastic. What do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments below. So of course, I'd like to say a massive thank you to Devork Yacht Brokers for letting me come on board and show you this boat. I know a lot of you have been looking forward to seeing this vessel. And as I said at the beginning of the video, at the time of making this video and uploading it to my YouTube channel, she is currently listed for sale with Devork Yacht Brokers. If you'd like to find out more, then as always, I'll leave a link in the video description. And if you haven't already, please don't forget to give the video a like, and please don't forget to subscribe. I know I keep harping on about it, but subscriber number is really important, uh, especially for people like me, when you go to a boat owner or a broker and you ask to see their boat and to showcase their boat, one of the first things they look at is how many subscribers you've got. So if you do hit that subscribe button, I really would appreciate it. Make sure you stay tuned. I've got lots of boats coming up in the next couple of weeks and couple of months. Until next time, fair winds and following seas. If you'd like to stay up to date with what is happening in the wonderful world of Explorer Yachts, then be sure to sign up for my free newsletter. You'll find a link in the video description.